this morning to you. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for the revelation, the instruction, the exposition of your word. We're asking, Lord, today, you wake up everyone. And all those who are in the dungeon of despondency, Lord, I pray that grace, the strength, the spirit, and the companionship of heaven that will tell them every time, don't give up. Amen. It's not time to give up. Amen. There's no time to give up. Amen. It's time to arise. Amen. It's time to run. Amen. It's time to do ministry. Amen. And it's time to take our nation, every nation, the continent, and the world for Christ. Don't sit down. I pray, Lord, today, everything we need, the equipment, the tools, the spirit, the focus, the vision, the revelation that will help us to do the next thing at the next level. Your grant to everyone in Jesus' name. But thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can be seated. We come to the final session of our series that we are dealing with Elijah. Now at this time, we meet Elijah at a particular point in time. And as we see him, we look at what now happens after the great success that he had. The fire came down, the rain came down, and the prophets of Baal were pushed away, pushed aside. Now, after that, Jezebel was not actually there. She wasn't in the habit of attending uh, meetings like that that Elijah conducted. But Ahab was there. And when Ahab got back home, Ahab told Jezebel. He didn't tell her of the fire. He didn't tell her of the failure of those prophets of Baal. He didn't tell her of the way he prayed and the rain and the revival and the refreshing came down only told her what elijah did to the prophets of baal and those were her prophets and so jezebel sent back and said i hear the story but i want to tell you i am the queen here by this time tomorrow I'll make your life like one of those prophets of Baal that you slew. And so when Elijah heard that, he took to his heel. Somebody said, Jezebel ran him out of town. No, not Jezebel. He, by what he thought, ran himself out of town. Nobody can run you out of town. It's what you think. It's the way you interpret. It's what you remember. It's what you forget that runs you out of town. Now, on the one hand, Jezebel. On the other hand, Jehovah. And so, Jehovah had been talking to him and the word of the Lord came unto him and the word of the Lord came unto him and the word of Jehovah came unto him. Now the word of Jezebel came unto him. And you have a choice either to look at Jezebel bigger than Jehovah either to say Jehovah had spoken 
But Jezebel is now talking. You have the choice to lean towards Jezebel and consider what she has said, or you have a choice. Now, you see our media people, you might have noticed in all that, you know, we're doing, uh, they show the picture on the screen. And then sometimes that same picture, they move it far and far and far away until you cannot even recognize what you're seeing. Now, in your mind, when you make Jezebel, you zoom in and you see an angry face and you see it very big and you see it threatening in your mind. Do what our media people do and let that picture go back and go back and go back until you cannot even see the position of the portrait. And then bring the picture of Jehovah, bring it very near, enlarge that picture and see that picture and see what Jehovah has said. Courage, welcome to you. Now, well, I'm going to tell you, we are going to read it yourself, what Elijah did at this time. But I'm asking, what should Elijah be doing at this time? He should be doing like, um, you know, Joshua, who called the nation together, one side here, one side there, and he read the word of God to them. They should have been the time of follow-up on the revival. The people had said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. They should have been the time when Elijah will organize the people from tribe to tribe and reveal to them the word of God. Jezebel blocked his view. This should be the time when Elijah should have risen up like Nehemiah and Ezra and bring the word of God to everyone because they said already the Lord is God. The Lord is God. Okay, if the Lord is God and is giving us the fire, is giving us the rain, what next? You need the knowledge of the word of God. He didn't do that and ran out of time. This should have been the time of following up and in the time of a discipleship there are seven thousand men that have not bowed their knee to any bear this should have been the time to find them out search them out and bring them together and train them so that they will join hands with him and then they will go all through the town all through the state all through the tribe all through the nation of israel but he didn't do that because Jezebel had spoken. That made him to forget the words of Jehovah. You will not forget. I will not forget. The question is, after such a revival, national revival, what should I be doing now? What strategy should Elijah have put in place as a follow-up of what had happened? But fear did not allow him to do that. Fear will not block your view. Will not block your mind. And will not destroy the goal and the purpose for which the Lord had called you. I'm going to talk to you this morning on repositioning a restored minister for a reproductive ministry. Repositioning. Here is Elijah. We know what happened to him. He ran. He shouldn't have run, but where he ran to, the Lord met him there. The Lord will meet you here. Repositioning, restored, he restored minister for a reproductive ministry. Look at First Kings chapter 19, verse 9. And he came hither unto a cave, and he lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen. That now the word of the Lord came to him. It's about time we forgot the word of Jezebel. That word that amounts to nothing, actually. What Jezebel said is that whoever you are, whatever. Whatever you think you can do, by this time of 
tomorrow i'll take your life away i'll kill you you'll die i remember pharaoh talking to moses elijah was not the first one that will have any threat like that and pharaoh said moses don't see my face again the, ne the next time if you dare eat i will kill you and moses said not to see your face again i'll not see your face again i know where we would meet that was chapter 11 of exodus in chapter 12 of exodus all the firstborn of israel of uh, egypt died you want to kill Moses? You cannot. Because he is to lead the whole nation to the land of promise. And Pharaoh is not big enough, is not mighty enough to exterminate the man that God has chosen to lead a nation out of captivity. And when Pharaoh did not get the message, after the children of Israel left Egypt, he said, I run after, after them. You know the story at the Red Sea, the one who, want to, who wanted to kill Moses, they all perished and they died at the Red Sea. We understand that when God is on the throne, not a Pharaoh and not a Jezebel can get rid of you. Here comes Goliath. And Goliath said, look at this boy. He wants to waste his life. Okay. Your nation wants to waste your life. I'll do it for them. And he cursed him by his gods. Now, David did not run out of town just because Goliath said, I'll kill you. Come on here. I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air. It's not what they say that throws you out of town. It is the way you feel. It is what you think. It is the conclusion you make that runs you out of town. And today, the Lord will give you the vision, the power, the understanding Nobody will run you out of your ministry, out of your company, out of your work. Nobody will run you out of that. And so, if he looked at him and said, you kill me, it's chapter 17, chapter 16, I just received the anointing. The anointing you receive will work for you. Then he took the sling. It doesn't take much to kill giants, Goliath, just a stone. They will all come down. Amen. Look at Peter. Peter, where are you now? I mean, the dungeon of Herod. What's he intending to do? He wants to kill me. Are you bothered? Not at all. But tomorrow is the day he has said, like Jezebel told Elijah, I'll get rid of you tomorrow. So don't worry about that. The Lord had given me a prophecy that when I am old, then this will happen, this will happen. And I'm not there yet. Herod cannot reverse the words of the king of kings. And so he slept. Can you sleep? Could Elijah sleep at such a time? No, he didn't sleep. But Peter slept and an angel came and woke him up, led him out. He'll lead you out of that captivity. <laughs> and after he's gone, they examine all the people there and they carried the death that they pronounced on Peter. And then uh, that same chapter, Herod came up, I'm um, the king. And then he spoke and people said, it's the voice of God 
And the angel, the angel that got Peter out of that death tra trap, smote him, he died. They all will go. Amen. We all will remain. Amen. We have a work to do. And we have a ministry to accomplish. Let no voice from anywhere. Jezebel, Pharaoh, Goliath, Herod, don't let any voice take the better part of you and then you get out of ministry. I will remain. I will remain. That's why the Lord brought us here today so that he can reposition you. And then you know, whatever Jezebel may say, everything will come to nothing. And now the Lord will restore you. And the Lord will reposition you. You will have a reproductive ministry. We're looking at three points in the message this morning. Number one, divine direction from natural despondency to a new discovery. Burn out, despair, despondency, tiredness, weariness, and the Lord gives a divine direction from that natural despondency to a new discovery. Number two, dramatic demonstration of noble dedication before notorious despots. Dynamic demonstration of notable dedication before notorious despots. Number three, desirable destiny of a no compromise defender through a no death departure. He thought he would die. He didn't die. I want an amen. amen. The Lord took him out of this life without the gate of death and he went for the rapture. The Lord is planning something greater for you than what you thought. He said, let me die. Take my life. Uh-uh. Elijah, there's a better thing. It's called the rapture. It's called the translation. It's called the catching up of the righteous from the earth without death. He wanted the worst of things. He prayed for the worst of things. And the Lord gave him the best of the best that anyone can offer. While you are thought because of your fear and because of timidity and because of the face of Jezebel that is so near, you are thinking of the worst, the Lord will not answer your negative prayer. Yeah. You know, the prayer when you are discouraged and despondent and you said it's time after all. I've done this, I've done this, I'm ready to go. Now, no, you are not ready to go. The Lord will not answer your negative prayer. He will reverse that negative prayer and then something, the very best that you never expected in your life that very best will be given to you. And it will start today in Jesus' name. Number one, we're looking at divine direction from natural despondency to a new discovery. I'm reading from First Kings chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 1. And Jezebel told, and they have told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with that, how he had slain all the prophets of the sword. Then in verse 2, it says in verse 2, Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me. Hold on. This is Israel. This is the land of Israel. This is the land of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And anyone, Jezebel, having the audacity to talk in the name of a strange God, in the name of gods, gods from her own foreign land, 
This is the land of the Lord. This is Israel that anybody could have the courage, the audacity to talk about another God and talk against a man of God. That alone should make us to understand that woman, that Jezebel will fail. In your life, in your ministry, in your profession, how can we allow any foreigner with a foreign God and with a falsified faith to say he, she was saying, so let the gods do to me and more also, if I, I, she wasn't voted in to lead or rule the land. Ahab was the king. Even Ahab could not talk. When Ahab saw all the things that happened, he couldn't open his mouth to say whatever. And now the woman that he, Ahab, went to the foreign land to get and bring to the land of promise, she now said, I will make thy life at the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. She didn't reckon with God. She didn't understand there is a God in heaven that drowned Pharaoh and the chariots in the river. She didn't understand. What did she know? A foreign woman that came to the life of Ahab. Did she know about water coming out of the rock? Did she know about the power of God that cannot fail? Did she know that there is a God in heaven greater than all the gods and all the bells? If she didn't know, Elijah should have known. If she didn't know, I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> you know, there are preachers that are of the New Testament caliber. And they fear demons, they fear idols, they fear gods, they fear everything, they fear superstition, they fear all the things that the people are saying. They say there's a woman there, he'll run you out of ministry. There's somebody there, you know, she did this before, she, and you are the next one, and then everything you'll be down, and you forgot all the Psalms you have read. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not, you forget, Psalm 27, that says, that though all the enemies in their thousand come against me, in this will I be confident. And you forget, Psalm 91, that tells us very clearly, he that dwelleth and abideth in the secret of the Most High, he will abide there, and then the wings of the Lord will cover him, in verse 4, and no evil shall come unto him. You forget the word of the Lord, as I live, ye shall live. Elijah forgot everything, and now he ran out of town. I am not running out of town. <laughs> Your manifest power. Amen. Your manifest authority. Look at verse 3 here. Verse 3 here says, and when he, Elijah, saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah and let a servant there. My servant, you stay here. Even the only companion he had, the only one could give him word of encouragement, he left that one there. I'm going, I don't know where. I'm just going to keep on walking and walking into the wilderness until I die. I want to die alone. I want to die in private. I want to die in secret. Nobody will even know where my body is. A man like that. Elijah wanting to die in isolation like that, that nobody will even know where he died. It will not happen to you. Yeah. How can you go like that with the whole church? Even if you are going to go, all of us will be there. 
And then we will sing and rejoice that you have finished the happy ministry and the fruitful ministry. And then we we'll celebrate. And then we we'll challenge the younger people that so and so, so and so is gone because they finished a kind of ministry that we want to also have. You will not die a kind of death in the wilderness that nobody knows where you have been. Look at verse 4 there. Verse 4 tells us, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die. That he might die. Elijah, you are not serious about wanting to die. If you wanted to die, why didn't you stay where uh, Jezebel told you? That by this time, to, if you are so eager to die, and if you want to really go, you don't have to go all this length and travel a day's journey. And then be crying and saying, I want to die, I want to die. Stay where you are. If you really want to die, Jezebel will do the job for you. He didn't want to die. That just, that just fear talking. That just discouragement talking. You don't want to die. It's just, just a discouragement. And the discouragement is taken out of your life in Jesus' name. He said, it is enough. I've done enough. I prayed fire came down. It's enough. I prayed the rain came down. It's enough. Uh-uh. Elijah is not enough. You're still going to anoint Jehu. And you're going to raise up Elisha. And you're still going to have ministry all over the nation and beyond the nation of Israel. You cannot say it is enough. What have you done? That you are saying it's enough. Greater tasks ahead of you. Higher task ahead of you. It is enough. He said, and then, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. I don't know his father, but I know his father did not bring fire out of heaven. Elijah, you are better than your father. The father did not bring rain from heaven. Elijah, don't talk like that. You are better than your father. So, you know, when we get uh, discouraged, we we'll say all sorts of things. Look at me now. I know my earthly father. And I know what he said. He wanted me to go beyond him, achieve beyond him. And we the little that has been done in my life, through my life, through my ministry, I cannot come and sincerely say and honestly say I am not better than my father. Everybody will say, what are you talking about? You are better. You are better. <laughs> Don't allow any word to come out of your mouth that is not really true that heaven will say i want the grace of god in your life the gift of god in your life and all the things the goodness of god everything that has been done you are better than your fathers yeah. and the best is still to come yeah. i said the best is still to come now, three things here. Number one, the despondency of such a man at such a moment. The despondency of such a man, a man like Elijah, at such a moment. Number two, the dispatch of such a messenger. He left his own messenger behind and he went into the wilderness a day's journey and God sent an angel from heaven the dispatch of such a messenger for such a minister. Number three, 
the directive of such magnitude was such mercy upon him. The directives that the Lord now gave him of such magnitude with such mercy. Look at number one. Number one, the despondency of such a man at such a moment. I read it to you already. We shouldn't be looking at a man, such a man, prophet of fire, prophet of provision, prophet of supply, prophet that the Lord had used in raising of the dead in chapter 17. And the woman said, by this I know that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth indeed. Such a man, at such a moment when the nation had seen the greatest revival they saw in the few centuries before. Such a man, at such a moment, that the whole nation, that they bowed down, that they said, because of the way God answered the prayer of Elijah, the Lord is God, the Lord is God. Such a man that single-handedly dealt with all the prophets of Baal, the courage and the strength to go through all that. Such a man at such a moment to have despondency. Such a man, my brother there, such a woman. My sister there, count your blessings and see what the Lord has done. Name them one by one and see what God has done in your life and through your life and see the people that have been saved and come to the Lord through you and see the ministry God has raised up through you, the profession, the work through you. In these few years, what the Lord has done, such a man, such a woman, at such a moment, you will not give room to discouragement or despondency in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is with you. Amen. The eternal one will never leave you. Amen. And so, so, you will not give up. Amen. I, 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 I will not give up. Now, if you are saying that, don't just say it here, looking at me. When you get back home, say it to the hearing of Jezebel. You know, amen. amen. There are some people that don't give testimonies. I don't want to give testimony because if I do, Jezebel will hear. And that Jezebel, she is switch. She's a wicked woman. She's naturally bad. And she's supernaturally terrible. I will not give my testimony. I won't want them to hear. I'm going to give my testimony. Everywhere. 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 Whether Jezebel is hearing or not. In fact, it's good if Jezebel hears. Because now. Instead of Jezebel making you afraid, you will make Jezebel afraid. Look at number two here. Number two here, the dispatch of such a messenger for such a minister. Look at First Kings chapter 19 verse 5. And I see lay and slept under a juniper tree. Behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Tell me, arise and eat. Arise and eat. That's the messenger touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Have you noticed that the life of Elijah, since the drought began, number one, a raven fed him. Number two, a widow fed him. 
Number three, when he thought he was at the lowest point of his life. When he thought, I don't amount to anything. When he thought, I'm not better than any of my fathers, an angel fed him. A raven, a widow, an angel. From today, higher heavens will feed you. Messenger from on high will feed you. You know, there are people that think when I'm not happy, when I'm sad, when I'm despondent, when I'm discouraged, God doesn't love me. When I say words out of discouragement and despair, God doesn't love me. But when I'm running, when I'm active, when I'm standing, when I'm challenging the nation, God loves me. A messenger, such a messenger, for such a minister. That at the lowest point, he didn't send the ravens back to feed him. He didn't send the widow to feed him. He sent an angel. God loves you. Amen. When you are sad, God loves you. Amen. When you are discouraged, God loves you. Amen. When it appears to come to the end of your road and you think, who am I now? And you don't, you can't even pray. You say, I cannot pray now. God knows how discouraged I am, how despondent I am, how terrible I am. Even the words I spoke out of my mouth, I even told him I, want, I wanted to die. God does not love me now. He loves you more than ever before. How do you care for your children when your children are active and when they are running up and down? You love them, you love them, but when they're sick, when they're despondent, when they say, I think it's better for me to die, I don't want to live, that's when you love them more. And our Heavenly Father is the same. When everything is down and when everything has collapsed and when you think, I don't amount to anything, then you see the love of God will flow into your life. I came here to tell you this morning that whatever you are going through and the deep rivers you are going through, God loves you Amen. and it will answer your prayer Amen. the is condition will not be the end of your life Amen. the dispatch of such a messenger for such a minister look at number three here number three we're looking at the directive of such magnitude was such mercy. We're looking at um, First Kings chapter 19, reading from verse 15. Uh, and the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of uh, Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Azael to be king over Syria. You know, the people that will feel that because of what I've said, I want to die. I'm not interested in ministry again. I'm not interested in preaching again. Because of what I've said, God will not send me on a new ministry. That's what you think. You are the man. You are the woman. Whatever you said, your discouragement, the Lord is about to send you for a higher ministry. Amen. When you say, I cannot, he says, yes, you can. I will not, <laughs> yes, you will. I don't want to do anything again. You will do more than anything. You will do something. Amen. And so God said, I give you directives now. Forget about Jezebel. <laughs> She's even forgotten about you. Anoint Azael, king over another country, foreign ministry, evangelistic ministry, missionary ministry, king over Syria. Look at verse 16. It says, And Jehu, 
the son of Nephi shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. Now, I'm going to use you to push Ahab and Jezebel aside, and you will appoint, anoint, announce the next king. You know, all these people that are thinking that, you know, they are there on the throne and they determine your destiny. Uh -uh. You determine their destiny. <laughs> Elijah, get up. You are the man I'm going to use to anoint Jehu, son of Nephi, and you anoint him to be king over Israel. The term of Ahab and Jezebel because of the threat they announced against my man, their term has ended. <laughs> and you are that instrument that will anoint the king of Israel. Now, and Elisha, the son of Shephat, of Abel Meholah, shall thou anoint to the prophet in thy room, in your place, your ministry will continue. Yeah. Where you led, you are leaving the ministry, there is one that will take over. And his name, your name is Elijah. His name is like yours, Elisha. And those two will connect together and he will continue the ministry of the prophet after you. Look at all that Elijah was still to do. And yet he said, it's enough. I'm finished. Thank God you are not finished. <laughs> My sister, are you there? Thank God you are not finished. My brother, minister, professional, are you there? Thank God you are not finished. Church, the church of the living God in our nation and in every nation. Church, are you there? You know, they said on the other side of the fence, they said they have finished the church. They killed the church. They exterminate the church. Is the church here this morning? Yes. We have not finished. Yes. We are preparing the people of God for the rapture, for the coming of the Lord, and no one, not a Ahab, not a Jezebel, can finish the church. Yes. Upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Amen. Let's come to number two now. Point number two, dramatic demonstration of notable dedication before notorious despots. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, number one, the new calling of a renewed ambassador for Jehovah. Number two, the new courage before reprobate Ahab and Jezebel. Number three, the new commitment with refined action for the just. Look at number one here. Number one is a new calling as a renewed ambassador for Jehovah. In chapter 21 of 1 Kings, what had happened is Ahab wanted the vineyard of Naboth. And Naboth said, never. I will not sell the inheritance from my fathers for any situation and to anyone. And he became so sad that he will not eat. And he lay on the bed 
And then Jezebel said, what's happening to you? Then he told the story. I have a desire. The desire for vineyard, Ahab. Instead of having desire that the goodness of God will continue the nation he ruled, instead of having the desire that the time of prosperity and progress, productivity, will come to the land, he had a desire for a vineyard. And so Jezebel said, Are you not the king? I, look at that woman, she's coming in. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth. You know the story. He made the arrangement and they got rid of Naboth and Ahab went to possess the land, the vineyard belonging to Naboth. And God told Elijah, Look at now the continuation of the story in First Kings chapter 21, verse 16. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Naboth rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, and the word of the Lord came to Elijah, the teach by saying, verse 18, arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel. Am I going to see that man again? Yes, of course. Jezebel were here. We've come out of despair and despondency. That Elijah now did not care, did not mind whether Jezebel was sitting by the side of um, Ahab. Because when you are in the path of right, righteousness and in the path of obedience to the Lord, nothing can touch your life. Amen. He is in the vineyard of Naboth, where whither he is gone down to possess it. Verse 19, and thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord, as thou killed, and also taken possession, thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord, the place where the dogs leech the blood of Naboth. Shall dogs leak thy blood, even thine? Look at verse um, 20. In verse 20, it says, And Ahab said unto Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? enemy and now remember the trembling spirit had been taken out of Elijah now the trembling spirit is taken out of you yeah. and that despondent attitude drooping complaining wanting to die all that is now gone and all those your negative thoughts you know why am i like this why am i like that it's better for me to die this morning everything is wiped out <laughs> and now when he has said as thou found me oh my enemy he answered i have found you because thou hast sold thyself to walk evil in the sight of the lord he had now the calling and then he had the courage to be an ambassador for Jehovah. You have the courage. Yeah. Nothing will move you. Yeah. Nothing will shake you. Yeah. And the old, old prayer, I'm giving up. I want to die. I'm not better than any of my fathers. All that old prayer, don't pray that prayer again because the Lord has healed you now. Amen. And the Lord has brought you out of that kind of despondent situation. Let's look at number two, courage before reprobate Ahab and Jezebel. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, behold, 
I will bring evil upon thee. I will take away thy posterity of the things of the sons or daughters that came from the union of Ahab and Jezebel. I'll take them away. And I will cut off from Ahab him that peaceth against the wall. I'm sure you understand that. It's talking about, you know, when boys want to urinate, they go to the side of the wall and then they peace against the wall. It's talking about the sons and it's talking about the posterity of Ahab. All that peace against the wall, it says him that has shut up or let in Israel, verse 22. In verse 22, it says, And I will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Beersha, the son of Ahijah, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made 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 Israel to sin. In verse 23, it says, And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, Now, Elijah that ran away because of the threat of Jezebel, after the Lord had dealt with him, infused him with new energy and new power, now he had the courage to speak even of Jezebel. The people you have been afraid of, you couldn't talk to, you thought they are the greater power than you have. You thought they have a greater intention to exterminate your life. That's what you thought. The Lord will send you back to them. You say, here. The word of the Lord. You'll become the man and the woman in authority. And the word of God in your mouth will be recognized because now you are going to talk without any despondency, without any despair, and without any discouragement. You are going to speak out of the depth of the revelation of your heart and the word of God will catch them will convict them, will convert them. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel, Elijah. You know who we are talking about? Woman of power. That woman that wanted to kill you, and she still has the sword. The Lord has taken the sword out of our hands. And now Elijah said, the dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Her destiny, determined by the Lord, was pronounced by Elijah. They don't have the final word of your life in their mouth. But you have the final word concerning their lives in your mouth. Amen. Give me a good amen. amen. And then in verse 24, look at verse 24. Him that dies of Ahab in the city, the dogs shall eat. And him that dies in the field, shall the fowls of the air eat. Verse 25, it says, But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself, sell himself. Now, when you sell your used clothes, all right, you sell your unwanted shoes, all right. You sell a landed property, maybe that's all right. You sell a house, maybe that's all right. But when you sell your soul, you sell 
your spirit, your cell, your position, your cell, your calling, your cell, your royalty, your cell, your cell into the hands of another one that now you are just a carcass moving about. You are nobody. Ahab, king in Israel, he sold himself to walk wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. There are men that do not have any voice of their own. They don't have a voice from heaven speaking to them. And they, depending on that word, speaking unto the congregation. And the Jezebel, they have for them that gives them the word. Not the Holy Spirit. Not the Lord Jesus Christ Savior. He had sold himself and everything he did. It was Jezebel that stirred him up. You'll not be an empty minister. Amen. A prayerless minister. Amen. A timid, fearful minister. Amen. That's your life. It's not led by you. Your actions are not your actions. Your utterances are not your utterances. And your focus is not your focus. Is somebody that ties a rope on your leg and wherever it pulls you like a puppet, that's why you go, I caught that rope today. <laughs> and now, Elijah, the man of God, and you, the man of God, the woman of God, you'll have the courage before reprobate Ahab and Jezebel in Jesus' name. <laughs> Look at number three here. Number three here is the new commitment with refired action for the just, the just one. That's for Jehovah. That's for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Welcome to for Second Kings chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 3. Second Kings chapter 1. Reading from verse 3. But the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, the Tishbite, arise, go up. To meet the messengers of the king of Samaria. And say unto them, those messengers, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of, the, of Ekron? Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, Now therefore thus says the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely die. And Elijah departed. He was another king of another realm of Samaria. And then the Lord knew what he was doing. The man, the king, had sent to the god Ekron of Ekron. Will I live? Will I die? And then God said, Elijah, ministry has come. Go to him. Meet those servants and ask them, is it because there's no God in Israel? <laughs> Elijah would not have done that in the days of discouragement, but now he will do anything and everything the Lord has called him to do. Before this conference, maybe somebody there, there were things you will not do. Because in your life, you woke up in the morning and you were afraid of the thin air of nothing. And then during the day, as you went about, you were afraid virtually of everyone. But now, a new day, a new direction, 
a new disposition, a new courage, a new commitment that the Lord now will send you where he could not have sent you one week ago. He will send you to do and to say the things you couldn't have said and the things you couldn't have done last month. The new power, the new fire, the new revival will burn in your heart everywhere in Jesus' name. And so, look at verse 5. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are ye now turned back? Look at verse 6. And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go, turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus says the Lord, When you are reporting back, and you are giving the message back, say exactly what that man of God has said. They were not afraid that the king will say, uh -uh. even if you are sent for the message of a servant, can't you deliver it with another tone and turn your mouth to the other side and deliver the message like a son? What did you say it exactly as the man of God has said? We are the ambassadors of Christ. Exactly as Christ has given us the message, that is how we're going to deliver the message. You know, the people that are always twisting and changing, I can't say it like that, I can't say it like that, because the people will not understand. Not because they will not understand, you are afraid of their reaction. Let that fear go out, and you will deliver the message of the Lord like it ought to be in Jesus' name. Say unto him, thus saith the Lord, Is it because there is not a God in Israel that thou sendest to the to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely die. I don't know the name of those servants, but I doff my heart for them. I praise God for them that they could tell the king exactly what Elijah had said. If you are a servant like that, unto such a king, and the Lord sent the man of God to tell you, go tell him, this is the word. Will you have the courage? Today you'll have the courage. Yeah. Will you have the backbone? Today you'll have the backbone. And deliver the message exactly as the Lord has given. Now, if you, you read the whole story yourself later, so the king said, who is that? What does he look like? They described the way he did. That's Elijah. That's Eli There's nobody in the land that can open his mouth and tell me that it's Elijah. Go and get him. Bring him here. Now, before only Jezebel had said, tomorrow I'll deal with you. Now, the king sent a servant with 50 people, 50 soldiers, get him. Anywhere he is, alive or dead, get him here. And Elijah sat down. He didn't stand up at this time. He sat down. And he said, man of God, a king has sent for you. And that you shall come. Am I man of God? And you have the gumption, the mind, to come to arrest man of God. If I be the man of God, let fire come down. And consume you at your 50. You didn't even have to stand up. Uh, there are things you deal with, you don't have to stand up. That's true. They're messengers of irreprobate king. Don't even have to stand up. 
and the fire came from heaven and consumed them. And the king had that. And the king was not compassionate about their lives. He sent another one. We're 50. And Elijah was now sitting. He's come to the place of rest. The place of restoration. That nothing jolted him anymore. You will come to that place. In your life. Where nothing will jolt you. You are relaxed. All the fear, everything will vanish away. So the next came. I said, man of God, the king wants you to come down. Come with us. Ah, a man of God. If I am man of God in truth, let fire come down and consume you and your 50. Gone. I said they are gone. Yeah. They want to take you. They are gone. Yeah. They want to squeeze your life. Squeeze life out of you. Until you become nothing. Like their prophets. They are gone. Yeah. And the thought came. And he didn't say man of God come down. He said... Man of God, I plead for my life. I'm here. I don't want to be here. But the king sent me on an unproductive errand. And I know the final word is in your mouth. Prophet, I kneel, I bow. And God said, Go with them. When you talk right, the prophet will go with you. When you say right, the man of God will leave his seat, he will go with you. The spirit of God will follow you into a higher ministry. And so he got there. And then he declared the word that the Lord had given him. We're going out at the end of this conference. We're going with fire. Amen. We're going with power. Amen. We're going with unction. Amen. We're going with authority. Amen. Let those evil personalities clear out of the way. Amen. The champions are coming. The ambassadors are coming. And everywhere you go and you declare the word of God, it will be confirmed in Jesus' name. Number three, we're looking at the spirit destiny of a no compromise defender through a no death departure our man elijah our model elijah our minister elijah is about to go now the plane is about to go up adjust your seat belt because that same power that elijah had the lord is about to make it descend upon Elisha. Amen. Any brother Elisha at home here? Any sister Elisha at home here? Power from on high. Amen. A double portion for everyone. Amen. Second Kings chapter 2. Read him from verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord will take up Elijah into heaven. The man wanted to go down into the grave. But God had another thing planned for him. The Lord will take up Elijah into heaven. 
buy a world wind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal on such a day when a spectacular thing is to happen you Elisha will not be missing at the side of Elijah in Jesus name look at verse 2 and Elijah said unto Elisha tarry here I pray thee for the Lord has sent me to Bethel and Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. The sons of the prophets had revelation, but they didn't have proper action. They knew that the Lord was going to take Elijah away without seeing death. But they didn't act on that. They didn't follow. They were just talking talk of mouth. But Elisha said, you know how to talk, but you don't know how to act. Hold your peace. I am moving on. I am moving on. To the place where the power will descend, I am moving on. To the place where the mantle of Elijah will descend, and I will take off my mantle and put on that new mantle, I am moving on. To the place I will see the chariots of heaven, and I will see them catching up Elijah, and they will go, and I have the assurance there is heaven. The chariot came from somewhere, it's heaven. And the chariots took him somewhere, it's heaven. To the place where I will not have any shadow of doubt in my heart, there is a heaven to gain. I am moving on. You'll move on. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, and Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave this so. They came to Jericho. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, and the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master, thy master, not our master, thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold thy peace. There are people that will hold you back with conversation. When you're looking up, I want you to look at them, conversation. When there's something, your heart burning, and you want to move on, they want your heart to cool now, conversation. And when you have a drive that you're going to receive what you have never received, the double portion, they're holding you in conversation, and it says, there's time to talk. There's time to keep quiet. There's time to sow. There's time to reap. And there is time for every other. But now today is not a day for talk, 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 talk. It is day for the descending of power from on high. And that power will come upon you in Jesus' name. There's a time to send text out. There's a time to receive text. There's a time to scroll and look at the telephone board at the time of prayer. All that was shut up. All that will go aside because now it is not the time to, you know, I'm scrolling this, I'm scrolling this one. This is not the time for any of those activities. This is the time when the power of the Almighty God from heaven will come upon you and you will have a double portion of the Spirit of God in Jesus' name.
Look at verse 6 and verse 6. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. Look at verse 7. And then in verse 7, and 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they, and they too stood by Jordan. Then in verse 8, we're told, and Elijah took his mantle and he wrapped it together and smote the waters and they were divided hither and thither and so they too went over they too went over you and i they too went over you and i they too went over you are coming over into the place of anointing. You are coming over into the place of power. You are coming over into the place where the mantle from heaven will come upon your life. You are coming over on dry ground. Then in verse 9, in verse 9, and it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, ask what I shall do for thee. Ask. Ask. What are you asking for today? What level of power are you asking for today? And when you get to it, you make up your mind. You are going to use it. God doesn't give anything. You don't have the intention of using. If you really want to do something, something dramatic, some, something unforgettable for the kingdom at such a time as this, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion, let a double portion, the portion of the firstborn in the family. That's the double portion. I want to be the forefront, in the forefront as you are going away. I want to be at the highest level as you are going away. I want to be at a place where people will not have to squeeze their eyes before they see me and they look up like this. I want to have the double portion. There. 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 Double portion in Jesus' name. Let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Verse 10. In verse 10. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, hard. Nevertheless, high. Nevertheless, great. Nevertheless, unheard of. Nevertheless, nobody has asked for that before. But nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. It shall be so unto thee. It shall be so unto me. But if not, it shall not be so. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, and it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, they didn't talk politics, they talked ministry. And talked, they didn't talk gossip, they talked gospel. And talked, they didn't talk foreign affairs, current affairs, they talked heaven's affairs. That behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. One day is coming. Christ will appear in the sky. The graves will open. 
and we who are alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds. Rapture. Resurrection. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Verse 12, in verse 12, and Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and wrenched them in pieces. Verse 13, and he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Verse 14, and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. And Elisha went over. Where is Elisha? Elisha went over. This day, this nation, in this continent, in the nations of the world. Where is Elisha? And the God of Elijah. He will be with you. Yeah. Verse 15. And when the sons of the prophets. Which were to view at Jericho saw him. They said. The spirit of Elijah. Doth rest. On Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Elijah is gone. The God of Elijah is with Elisha. That God is with you. His power is with you. Success ahead of you. Promotion ahead of you. No failure anymore. Double portion. Double portion. Double portion. Arise and receive. Tell the Lord. No negative words again. The Lord is raising you up. Elisha now at such a time for such a task. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Ask. 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 Don't limit your asking. Ask. I'm a man. Ask. I'm a woman, ask. The Spirit of the Lord. Upon you. Give yourself to the Lord. A renewed ministry for a refocused ministry
a restored ministry, a reviving ministry, a new man, a new minister. A new messenger of the Lord. You forget the past. You are focused on the present and the future. Double portion. Double portion of his spirit. Ask. Double portion of the anointing. Ask. Double portion of power, ask. Double portion of divine authority, ask him. Double portion of courage, ask him. It's your time. Elijah is gone. You are the man of the hour, the woman of the hour. And you need his power, his spirit, a new anointing, a new revelation. A new strain, a new dynamite in you. As and it shall be so. Let him feel your vessel to overflowing until the people that see you, they will know the spirit of Elijah has come on Elisha. The inspiration, the courage, the strength, the anointing, the divine unction and authority of Elijah has come on Elisha.
In Jesus' name we pray. Elisha, in Jesus' name we pray. I have received. I am a new man. I am a new woman. I am a new minister. I am a new professional. I arise. I stand. I speak. And the word of God in my mouth will be fulfilled. There's a new authority over your life. A new anointing in your life. A new success will follow you. A new power will follow you. From today to the months and the years to come, success will follow your ministry. Raise up those hands. Father, we well, thank you. You have spoken to every one of your servants brother sister man woman here online everywhere where we're connected a new day has dawned for everyone lord i pray the spirit of despondency of fear of timidity of discouragement of wanting to give up the spirit of suicide wanting to die lord i cast them out in jesus name the spirit that wants to live the spirit that wants to work the spirit that wants to achieve and the spirit that wants to manifest the glory of God for this generation let it come on everyone now in Jesus name you come to this point this moment your pastor Gilgal your pastor Bethel your pastor Jordan now the mantle comes Lord I pray give everyone that mantle of power now in Jesus name and I pray as every man every woman every minister every professional as they go now with this new mantle, new authority, new anointing, a new power, no evil will come near them. No other power will short change what you have given them. Brother, arise. Sister, arise. Get up. Go up. Move higher. To the place of achievement. The Lord be with you. His glory overshadow you. His grace support you. His gift multiplying your life. Lord, I know you have done it. I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray.